Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's ASUN production of Teammates, our series on the value of teammates and the process of becoming a valued teammate. We choose to address real issues of racial inequity, and we intend to, for this program, to contribute towards an improved world of teammates. So um, with that being said, I wanted to invite um, to the program with me today, <clears throat> excuse me, out of FGCU, I have Jeremy Borland. And Jeremy Borland, just introduce yourself and your position with the university. Hey, good afternoon, Control. Thank you for that. Uh, my name is Jeremy Borland. I am the Assistant AD of Business Development, as well as the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer here. I've been at FGCU for um, about six years now and looking forward to the session today. Awesome. Thank you very much. And also joined with us, I have Irvin Lewis. Um, he is out of North Florida. So um, just introduce yourself as well as your position. Thanks, Kendrell. Um, yes, my name is Irvin Lewis. I'm a senior associate athletic director for facilities and operations and internal operations. Also, I'm the chief diversity and inclusion officer for the athletic department here. And I've been at the University of North Florida now going on 11 years. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. And again, thank you guys for uh, taking time out of your busy days just joining me here. Um, I know it's Black History Month, so I definitely wanted to get these out. And again, I appreciate you guys for sitting down and talking with me. Um, first question I wanted to ask was uh, for Mr. Borland. Uh, Mr. Borland, this is your sixth year at FGCU. And, um, you joined back in 2015, as you mentioned, and um, you were most recently elevated to the assistant AD for business development uh, back in um, July of 2019. And just this past October, you were named the Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, first and foremost, is this a new position at the university? And if so, what was your vision and what you would like to accomplish at this position? Thank you, Kendrell. Um, actually, no, this is not a new position uh, for the university. We've actually had this position for the university since it opened. What we did is take it a step for, uh, further and make this a new position for athletics that we selected this uh, chief diversity office uh, officer to be someone in the athletic department as well. We normally, uh, prior to last year, we had our chief diversity office come from the university side and that person also was over our title nine um so it was a holistic view of what we're looking for for the university and represented athletics as well with everything um that transpired last year and just continuing to um, be great and further express our interest and knowledge uh, to the betterment of our student athletes uh we thought it was time to elevate someone of our own to the position of the chief diversity officer. Um, I had the esteemed pleasure of being nominated and then um, selected as that representative. And for me, my vision is to continue to be a tool and an asset for our student athletes. Uh, this position alone is a direct tie to our student athletes. And for them to have a voice when not only our administration, but the whole university. We look at this position as a direct link to the feelings, thoughts, everything that the student athletes is going through or will go through um, and how we can help them. We are here for the student athletes. You, know, you look at it, um, us working in collegiate athletics, if there weren't no student athletes, we wouldn't have any positions, we wouldn't have any jobs. So first and foremost, they come first. And I mean, it's very cliche. We always say, you know, there's the student first before the athlete, but we go even further than that. Um, we have the person before they're even a student. And the things that have been plaguing our country as of late have caused a lot of concern with all of our student athletes. And we wanted to do everything that we could within our power to make our student athletes feel comfortable and feel heard. All right. Thank you. Um, well said. And um, actually, um, Mr. Lewis, I wanted to just ask you the same question because I know that you started with North Florida. Um, well, you've been there since 2009 when you were the um, senior associate athletic director. And well, um, you were there and you became the senior associate athletic director just a year later in 2010. So um, I know you were appointed to this position um, last September. So I wanted to ask you again, um, is this a new position and with the university or just the um, department? And also, what, what are some things that you wanted to achieve in this position? 
Well, thanks, Kendrell. And um, I'm gonna kind of piggyback on what Jeremy um, said. Um, as far as the university, this is not a new position with the university per se, um, but it is an entirely new position in regards to athletics. Um, it, it came to me as a surprise that I was kind of just coming back up off of vacation and <laughs> saying, say, hey, I need to talk to you about this new position um, that we'll like to um, we'll like to elevate you in. And um, and I think it, it, it goes back. I, I'm very passionate when it comes to diversity and inclusion. And um, I had recently, when everything was transpiring um, in one of our senior staff meetings, um, I recently informed them that as a minority male, um, a husband and a father, that you know my my own son was racially profiled in a, in a pretty nice neighborhood and things of that nature. So they knew I had a passion for it, and I just wanted to shed some light that you know, even though we see individuals you know in and out of our offices and we have student athletes in and out of our offices, and we're trying to educate and make sure the student athlete experience is worthwhile. Um, that's part of our job, like Kendra said. I mean, I mean, like Jeremy said, if we don't have any student athletes, we don't have a job. And and just be an advocate for diversity and inclusion um, as we transition and things change um, throughout our society. Um, besides the pandemic, we have other issues that we're facing um, as a society, and it's important to have a voice. And sometimes, you know, for student athletes, for coaches, for staff. Um, you know, they, they could have a certain feeling one way or another about it, but because of our position and because of their positions, um, not feeling um, totally comfortable to speak and voice their opinion and things of that nature. And I want to kind of share some light and give them a platform, give them a place where they are comfortable in talking about their experiences. And what I thought was important, even with this pandemic, to go even farther than the diversity and inclusion um, is I, I developed what we call a team hall. It's like they have town hall meetings. I, I, I wanted to do a team hall and kind of bring different teams together um, for them to just talk. And so I, I kind of named those segments. Um, it's actually called Let's Talk. <laughs> and for them to talk about any and everything that's going on, because not only are we dealing with diversity and inclusion, but with the constant changes and in, in, with the pandemic and the constant changes of schedules and, and we're trying to conduct sports and things of that nature. Um, you know, we know depression is real also. And so just giving them a, a different avenue to express themselves, to, to talk and um, hope, hopefully to shed some light on, um, on their heart. And I, I think that's important. And there are people too, like like Jeremy said, you know, you shed some light on the person. And we have a slogan that we started here. You know, we see you, we hear you, we celebrate you. And in celebrating our st student athletes, you know, it's, it's important for me to get to know them, get to know their hearts, um, get let let them get to know each other's because now we're in our bubble per se. Everybody is siloed and segmented and things of that nature. And so. They don't want them crossing each other. When are they gonna find time to talk? When are they gonna find time to express themselves? And so what we didn't want to happen, what I didn't want to happen is, although we have our super seniors per se, I didn't want them to go through a whole entire year without getting to know someone else who's not on their team per se. Getting to know where they're from, what they're doing, you know, how they're living, how they're coping. and you know, what's important to them in regards to diversity and inclusion, things of that nature. So um, that's what our vision is um, here, is to get us to communicate more as a staff, as student athletes, um, and as coaches. Awesome, thank you very much. And um, another question I wanted to ask, because um, just when it was um, approached to me about um, just coming out and um, doing this segment, um, I know the commissioner reached out to me. It was something that he wanted to do just in light of all the social injustice and everything that was taking place last year. Um, I wanted to ask, um, because Mr. Lewis, you definitely uh, mentioned um, why you had an affinity for the position or it was something that you wanted to do. Um, I wanted to ask, was there any other things that led you to want to take part with this particular position um, with the university and how it was presented to you? Because I know 
Um, like I let it out in a lot of the meetings that we had, like my mother, she was from Birmingham or, you know, AKA Birmingham um, during all of the social injustice and everything that was going on there. And my aunt, she had attended um, the church that was bombed by the four little girls. And um, so I was really heavy into just reading on just everything that was going on in Birmingham, the children's marches and all of that stuff that had taken place in during the 60s. So was there anything that led you to wanting to take on this role? Um, and I open that up to both of you. Anyone can answer. Um, I'll say yes. I mean, being being here at the University of North Florida, you having about 300 athletes. Um, we don't have a very diverse um, student athlete population. And we don't have a very diverse staff. Uh, we have some work to do. And my thing is, I believe in total transparency. And um, our student athletes have done a tremendous job, um, both on and off the field, on the, on the courts, in the classroom. And for a minority, we've had a lot of success. And, and I'm minority student athletes who came through the program over the last 11 years that I've been here, um, have done a tremendous job, graduating honors, um, going out in society, doing great things, um, getting great jobs, things of that nature. And we celebrate them. Um, but I wanted to take on this job because it's more than just celebrating what they do on the court. I mean, get to see them for who they are, get to get to understand where they came from, their backgrounds and things of that nature. And I think we we miss we miss the boat a lot um, because we're so caught up in winning. And my thing is, I, I want I love winning. I love winning, but I like to win the day. I like to win the day in each and every day. If you can inspire, or encourage someone to be their authentic self and be the best, very, very best version of themselves every day, to me, that's what you want. And if if they can be successful on the courts or on the fields, to me, that's icing on the cake. That's a bonus. And so when we start talking about the student athlete experience, you know, we want our constituents, our donors. Um, whoever is as affiliated with the program to really get to know our student athletes and get to know their backgrounds and and get to know their hearts, you know, why they do what they do, why they play the sport that they play with so much passion and things of that nature. We don't want to just hold up the banner or hold up the trophy at the end of the season, at the end of the season, and say we are champions. You know, I, I, I feel like all our student athletes are champions just by how they conduct themselves on and off the courts and what they do in the classroom and representing us. And so I want our constituents and our donors to be able to understand that it's more to it. It's more to it. And and in writing a check or or donating things of that nature, which we need more of. Um, but I want them to donate their time, donate their hearts and, and see exactly what this thing can really become if we continue to communicate and, and love and understand one another. Gotcha. Anything you wanted to add to that, uh, Mr. Borland? Uh, yes, um, as Brother Lewis said, um, for me, I would say it was an, an absolute honor to represent the student athletes and athletic department and the university in this capacity. Um, after all the things transpired and, you know, I have a, a, a pretty good handle on our campus as well as our student athletes and just our you know day-to-day -day interactions and having the same conversation with different teams and different players was like man it, it this is a this is a consent it's a consensus this is something that needs to be dressed addressed openly no longer you know one-on-one -on -one or these closed door uh, conversations. This is something that, you know, affects the masses. And, you know, why have the same conversation 10, 12 times, which I don't mind, and I'm more than happy to continue to do it. But let's have it out in the open. Let's get everyone because the same thing that, you know, you may be feeling in control or Brother Lewis can be feeling, um, someone else is feeling, but may not be as open to speaking up. And it is so crazy. Great minds think alike. Um, we actually do town halls is what we created. I love the name team uh, team halls. That's very creative. But we started uh, town halls um, as uh, back probably as early as May um, when all the, you know, the unfortunate uh, actions started happening um, in the world um, in regards to race being, you know, put out so much in the public. But we started and, you know, it started with our um, minority leadership group, which is myself and six other uh, coaches and staff, 
And we were meeting uh, through Zoom, which I love because, I mean, we were able to do um, sometimes over 150 student athletes in one uh, one video call, but just talking. Let them go on and ask the questions. Why this happened? Why that happened? What am I supposed to do? What can I do to prevent this from happening? Um, And we have a lot of international students. There are a lot of students that never even had to worry about, you know, what is diversity and inclusion? You know, what what is, you know, what is equitable? What is equity? You know, all those things like, oh, I, I never even had to take this kind of, you know, thing into account before I got to the United States. So this was a huge opportunity for us to talk about the things that, you know, get whispered about or get shared among some, but to bring among the masses. And the biggest thing that we've been trying to push here at FGCU is that we are one green and blue family, that it doesn't matter, you know, your, uh, your color, your, your background, um, you know, ethnicity, nothing. Um, we are one family. And the town halls and the appointment of this has just been a huge help to get us all on one page, to have those, un- those uncomfortable conversations. And they're only uncomfortable when you don't have them. And that's what makes them uncomfortable is not having those conversations out in the open. The more you have those conversations and you get the knowledge out there about what's going on and the reasons and how to help prevent and to educate, I mean, that's the first step. So um, as Brother Lewis said, it's, it's, it's been an amazing opportunity. And I take this appointment um, as the chief diversity officer, you know, very, very important because it, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I have seen the most change with this appointment than any other position I've had. Gotcha. And I mean, I just wanted to add, I definitely have applauded the conversations that have taken place just in wake of everything that um, happened last year because I mean I mentioned it on a previous um, show that I did but um, at the, the death of Sean Bell and the officers getting off with that um, it, I shut down like I honestly didn't want to talk about it anymore it was just something I really locked away and I wasn't really ready to talk like I said I shut down my social media so um, I appreciate a lot of the conversation that's being had, and um, I know that we are a year to the day, um, probably a little bit past it, since the uh, death of Ahmaud Arbery, as well as we're approaching the anniversaries of the death of Breonna Taylor, as well as George Floyd. Um, I wanted to ask you, just just in wake of all the social unrest that took place last year, um, there's been um, it's been documented that there's just been more. Um, talks about corporate America wanting to hire more African Americans and more just more minorities in positions just to have more um, just to have more inclusion. I wanted to ask you um, have these conversations been had because I know we talk about town halls and team halls have these conversations been had like in office meetings and um, just throughout the universities or what are the discussions at your respective universities? Go ahead, Jeremy. I'm going to let you take it just from first. And no worries. Thank you, Brother Lewis. Um, with us, absolutely. Our biggest thing here is you think about the more, the better. Um, diversity has always been a big thing here at FGCU. And the way we look at it is our student athletes are very diverse. We have a, um, a large amount of our student athletes come from all over the world. And one thing um, that's comforting is for our student athletes to have administration or coach look like them. When you go somewhere, it, it's a, you know, we actually just had a training about this the other day, some of our, our biases and some of our unconscious bias is that, you know, you immediately feel at a level of more comfort when you're with someone or people that look, sound, or from the you know, same area as you. So with the diversity talk, it helps that the more diverse um, we can have for from an administrative standpoint, from a team standpoint, from a student athlete standpoint, the more knowledge we have. The you know the 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 issues that I may be facing here in Southwest Florida may be different from the issues that Brother Lewis is facing um, over there in Jacksonville or Kendra, what you guys are facing up in you know Kennesaw, Georgia. So for us, it's been knowledge. Knowledge is power. That is a very old saying, but but it's still true today. 
that knowledge is power and with knowledge the diversity that we have is increased knowledge because you're having more people come from more areas that are bring, that are able to bring that knowledge with them to a different area so that has definitely always been a focal point for us um where talent is talent um we don't care what you know, color you are, where you come from, what you look like, how you speak, how you talk with language, none of that. Talent is talent. And we always look for the best talent because like I said, um, knowledge is power. And if you're able to continue to have that diversity in all areas of your department and university, it's only continues to, to strengthen your chances at success. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Jeremy. and. And I will um, kind of give a, a little shout out and some kudos. Um, our coaches have done a, a really, really good job um, recruiting um, student athletes and bringing them in here, bringing them here to our program here at the University um, of North Florida. Um, but since all of the social unrest and, and, and Kendra, I really appreciate you bringing up because I did the same thing after the Maud Aubrey um, murder. I, I kind of like shut down. Um, because I have a, a 18 year old son and I, I just envision him running around my neighborhood. So, you know, in saying that and kind of getting out of my own, my own head and my own feelings per se, the one thing I didn't want to do in regards to diversity inclusion is just check the box. Um, you know, I want to totally, you know, kick in the door and, and just rip open the box per se. And I didn't want none of our our student athletes, it doesn't matter. Um, their, their race, creed, color, it doesn't matter. Is I didn't want any of our student athletes to just check the box because I think checking the box is just settling. And I wanted us to be above that. And and so in essence, we had to kind of level up. They had to kind of level up and break the mold and break the serial types fall and, and, and be the very best they can be and, and be even better, be even better. And, and that's what I kind of pushed. Um, kind of encourage and, and, and motivate myself, but uh, let alone others. That's what you, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to do because once you receive your paper and walk across the stage, or well, now it's virtually because of the pandemic, <laughs> but you know, once you receive that paper, what per se, and then you started, you start sitting down at that computer and, and, and sending out your resume, whatever, you know, we want that resume to stand out, you know, and we want people to, to want to meet you, want to know you and, and speak on your behalf and things of that nature. So checking the box is, is what something that I'm, I'm big in. And, and I don't want anyone checking the box on me. I don't want anyone checking the box on our student athletes because, you know, it's, it's kind of boldly saying that I want to be the box. You know, don't, don't check. I don't want to be one to check. I, I want to be the box. And I just I just had this conversation maybe 30 minutes ago. ago. And it was, and I was just talking to one of our student athletes about um, having a seat at the table, having a seat at the at the table. And then the question I asked, I said, you know, would you rather just grace everyone with your presence when you enter the door, or do you want to walk through the door and boss the room? And I want to walk through the door and boss the room because I want to have that type of confidence going in. And that's the same type of confidence I think student athletes take into their competitions. That's the same type of I want them taken into a job interview. You know, don't just be happy with having a seat at the table per se. You know, be confident in your skills, and and that comes without without saying that checking the box just ain't good enough. It's just not good enough. I want I want to be better than that. And if I would have had just checked the box back in the day, 11, 12 years ago. I wouldn't be sitting in this seat right here. You know, I had to be better. Interesting. And yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Or it's just interesting you brought up Ahmaud Arbery and just running because I know, um, yeah, that thing that just resonated with me um, just because I run a lot, just running around neighborhoods. Like that's the first thing I do when I go travel. And um, it just hit me because one of my old coworkers, he, he mentioned, he asked me one time, he's like, Kendra, if I were in your neighborhood, would it be okay for me to walk around? And I was like, eh. I was like, right, there's certain places in my neighborhood I probably wouldn't walk around. 
But I mean, you should you should be fine. But I asked him, I was like, can I walk around in your neighborhood? Because I was like, whatever fear you may have, I have the same fear. Um, there's no telling what may happen or um, just what incident I may run into around the corner. And um, I just felt that that was um, just how um, what led to his death or how he was murdered. I, that could have happened to anyone. So it really resonated with me. But um, just staying along um, the path, I wanted to ask you because um, I actually wanted to reach out to uh, your two universities because I looked at um, first um, Mr. Borland, you guys had an Eagles Against Injustice um, walk back in November. And I know on the back of your shirt, you had the Black Lives Matter. On it. I, I wanted to ask you, um, what did it take to just put that together? Um, and I seen you out there, um, you had the bullhorn, um, you had everybody out there speaking. I wanted to ask you, what just went into that and how did it come about? I would be remiss if I took credit for that. I have to say that that goes directly to our student athletes. They were a pivotal, um, you know, part of that, putting that all together. Those town halls have literally been me setting up the, the Zoom and, you know, just sitting there as a moderator. I mean, the from start to finish, the t-shirt design, the logos, the slogans, the voting, the ordering, everything was ran by our student athletes. It's been an amazing process to be a part of. I mean, they wanted to get out and do what they could to show the world that they are not going to remain silent. The biggest thing right now, and I think that 2020 has taught us is that um, silence is agreement. And they wanted to make sure that it was known that they are not going to remain silent. And of course, with COVID, it made things very interesting to do a march, to do a walk, um, their numbers. And, you know, we have uh, certain limitations that in order to conduct a safe campus that we had to follow the rules of, of, you know, the university. So, you know, we had to put together a COVID friendly um, uh, march for this and it was uh, very interesting. You know, we did a three and a half hour block where 15 minute intervals where we had no, no block larger than 15 people. And we had to do that. So it was, it was very different. Um, it was very interesting. You got a, you hit a larger time spread because of the way you had to do the intervals. Um, but we had over 300 in participation. And um, due to the procedures with COVID and how we wanted to keep numbers small, at this time, unfortunately, we were unable to join with the rest of the campus and allow um, others to participate with us. It was an athletics only um, March because we were trying to get ready for the spring participation and you know having all 15 sports participate. So we wanted to keep any um, potential exposure down. So we had only... Uh, only athletics only and only walk um, marching within our bubbles, which was our teams. But I mean, it, it was, it was, it was, um, it was exceptional um, for them to come up with the, you know, the name Eagles against injustice. I mean, that, that was their first, you know, mark against, you know, Mark and their, their speak to the world was that we're not just for one injustice. We're, a, we're in, we're against all injustices. And right now, you know, the, the topic that they chose to support is social justice, that we are going to fight for social justice. So, I mean, it was getting the, you know, marking down the route, the, the time of day, they put so much research in what they wanted to do. They reached out to campus, um, campus police and they asked for the uh, temperature gauge and uh, for the campus and temperature gauge means what day on, what day of the week has uh, the most classes and has the most students on campus and you know and that's how we got our day you know this day tuesday has the most students on campus the next said what was the time slot when is the time slot that you guys have most parking garages on campus filled and they gave us a time between 10 and 2 p.m all of our garages on campus are at over 80 percent capacity and i was like wow our student athletes took I mean, every detail in they did to make sure they got as much exposure as they could out of this um, this march. And then from then, the route. I mean, we did a route that, you know, hit campus, but then allowed us to walk out to a public road so that ongoing traffic would be able to see 
our participation in this march and standing up for social justice. So, I mean, Control, it was, I mean, it was absolutely amazing to be, a, a, you know, a part of. And like I said at the beginning, I'd be remiss if I tried to take credit for it. I was just so happy to be involved with something like that with our young men and women making this choice that this is something that they wanted to do. And it was a, a, I mean, it was a mission for them to get out there and speak up that, hey, we hear you, we see you, we want, um, we support the rest of the world in this fight against injustice and that the only way we can be successful is to fight together. That's awesome. Um, yeah, because I was looking at the shirts and um, yeah, whoever came up with the design and like the phrase and everything, I was like, you might want to pay them some attention. Right? Like you have, like, since you're in sales, like you might have a little genius somewhere working <laughs> in the ranks. So, all right. And also, uh, Mr. Lewis, I definitely wanted to speak on, um, because I know you guys, um, you also, November as well, you guys had a walk of unity and solidarity on the North Florida campus um, back in November as well. So um, I wanted to ask if you can just provide more detail as to how that came about and how it was carried out. Yes, Kendra, since I'm over all the facilities and the planning and the schedules and, and things of that nature, um, actually um, our diversity and inclusion um, committee that consists of staff, coaches, and student athletes, um, we planned it together. And um, some of our student athletes actually sit on our sack also. And um, what we wanted to do, we, we kept it in-house. We kept it in internal campus. And, you know, because we didn't, we wanted to do a unity walk. And with the height of injustice and the political wars that were going on. And, you know, here in, in Florida, as you, as you know, um, Jeremy, with, you know, the state wanting to open open up, but the campus is pretty much closed and things of that nature. So we had to be very strategic in how we plan and how we got approved to do a unity walk um, on campus. And ours were very short. It, it only lasts about an hour. Um, you know, we had majority of our teams um, participate and we invited clubs and organizations across campus um, one evening, I forgot, I think we did it on a, a Thursday, maybe a Thursday or something. I um, forgot the actual day, but um, it was very well received. Um, the young, talented artist, Kedron Bryant, who I'm um, saying the song, I Just Want to Live, um, he came, he spoke um, prior to the Unity um, March. Um, he's from here in Jacksonville. and. Um, it was, and he went around to the different teams, masked up, and took pictures with the um, the teams and things that, of that nature. So it was very well um, received. Um, but I just asked the question, you know, um, what's now after the walk? You know, and we're pledging unity, unity against injustice, um, and just want to take it even further. I didn't want it to rest, and that's where the the, the team the team halls came about and and you know every year I think it's going to be important as we move forward for coaches and staff you know as they go through their recruiting you know you got super seniors this year but when recruiting open back up um, families are going to be asking you know where do you stand what are you doing um, in regards to diversity and inclusion and injustice and things of that nature and it's important to have a plan. It's, it's important to um, embrace the changes that we're having amongst us, um, not only in society, but amongst us um, as, as, as colleagues and, and working in this university setting. Um, so that's what, that's what we did. It was totally internal. It didn't last more than an hour. We wanted, we wanted it quick, but after that, we had some um, social media, some videos that we created in house, some social injustice messages that we play at our games, before our games and things of that nature. But I think um, a lot of it, our teams, our teams and coaches really dive down into it um, because we have, like Jeremy said, we have so many international student athletes that was totally kind of unfamiliar with some of the things that we were facing here in the United States 
and just to have those tough conversations, um, uncomfortable conversations with them, it just spearheaded so, so many other um, topics and discussions and things of that nature. So as an administrator, you have to sit back and, and kind of smile and embrace that. We got young student athletes that were going to be productive, you know, members of society later, having some tough, uncomfortable conversations now and, and for us just to support it and encourage it even more. Awesome. And yeah, definitely because during your walk, because I'm I'm on social media, so being the director of social media here, I'm on it all the time. And I seen the shirts that you guys had at your march. The we see you, we hear you, we celebrate you, um, t-shirts and the message. Um, was there any message that uh, you all wanted to convey um, with those t-shirts, or was there anything that you were trying to say specifically? Well, basically, that you know, we see you, we hear you, we celebrate you, meaning that we see people of all different race, colors, creed. It didn't matter. And we, we hear your cry, even though sometimes silence is the best teaching. We, we hear what you're saying by your actions. And then we're, we're celebrating everyone. We're celebrating everyone. And it's, it's, it's important. And it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, if you're only celebrating in times where you're holding up a trophy, you know, is that really winning? And my thing is, you can hold up a trophy every year and not having your student athletes leaving your university, you know, having received that holistic approach of what it means to be a student athlete and, and you know, kind of imposing your will and, you know, impressing the importance of education and learning and loving and things of that nature. We want to give them the, the best student athlete experience. And this is, I'm, I'm sure Jeremy will try to do the same thing at Florida Gulf Coast. And to me, you know, that, that, that breeds better mothers, better fathers, you know, productive members of society and things of that nature. And to me, that's how we're going to get over this, this hump per se, that's, that's staring us in the face. And, you know, it's, it's not going to go nowhere if, if people like, you know, myself, you, Kendra and, and Jeremy, if we don't stand boldly and, and kind of really take on the conversations and, and have the conversations and um, continue to press forward. So um, those shirts, that's the, what was printed on the shirts that's really speak loudly and boldly, especially to the ones who really didn't feel like they had a voice. And we still celebrate you and we, we hear you even through the midst of silence. Awesome. And yeah, I definitely, um, because when I seen the last um, sentence where was, we celebrate you, um, I was like, we really don't celebrate each other enough. And I feel as though um, just being in the space, like say, for instance, this particular uh, career path, just working in college athletics, where um, student athletes and assistant coaches make uh, predominantly um, most of the uh, positions in college athletics, but we are underrepresented in like executive roles or in staff roles. Um, I really wanted to celebrate you guys because I know like just looking at the staff directories and everything, like when I go and I see someone like I'm reading, I'm like, what did they do to get to their particular position? So, you know, I wanted to celebrate you guys and Mr. Boylan, just everything that you did um, just at um, when you were at Georgia State and just like being on NACMA, like I'm on NACMA now and just, you know, just trying to get out there and just um, like you say, we see talent, just trying to put myself in the position where I can um, like leverage my talent or just show off my talent as much as possible. And I know Mr. Lewis just like, you've pretty much been in every department. Um, I know you're working in academic advising. I seen that you also were a head coach and I seen that it was a head coach in, in Monticello, whereas you were, um, you were an FSU grad, so you guys were all around the same area. And I actually, I was the marketing director at FAMU at one point in time. So I was like, it's amazing just to see people along their career paths and how close people can be at certain times. So um, yeah, definitely want to celebrate you guys. And one other question I did want to ask, um, just being respectful of your times, um, just for other people that are like myself and um, they're looking to come up and they want to work in college athletics, what are some um, words of encouragement that you can offer them or just some words of wisdom that you wish you would have heard sooner or just something that you want to pass on to them? 
I'll take that first. Um, something that I've always kind of lived by and was, you know, tasked with me um, at an early age is being better than the competition. Um, and that, that, that goes to all areas of life, not only sports, um, your family, your job. Um, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So when you have to go that extra mile, you're going that extra mile because you know no one else is going to do it. And um, I love the analogy Brother Lewis said earlier about, you know, walking in and owning the room. I mean, that's how I try to live my life. I don't, you know, walk in somewhere and want to be, you know, a fly on the wall. You know, I really, when I go somewhere, I want to make an impact. I want to take that opportunity to do the best that I can. So, you know, what I would tell the youth, anyone trying, you know, to, you know, inspiring, excuse me, aspiring to be, you know, where we are now is to keep up the good fight. To, to fight for what you believe in. Um, anything that you want is obtainable and you can get there with hard work, dedication and perseverance. Um, that, that, that's the biggest thing is to never give up, continuing to work. It's crazy that we were all in the, you know, the North Florida area, you know, Tallahassee, uh, Tallahassee area, you know, um, for um, a moment in time and, you know, and, you know, being from Florida and working around and being from, you know, all different from Florida to Georgia to where we are now, it's, you know, all over, but we're continuing to, you know, to put our best foot forward today. And what I want to do is, be that person that I would have wanted when I was younger, when I was their age for them now. So what can I, you know, what do I wish I would have knew then that I know now and pass that knowledge. My biggest thing has always been, um, I shouldn't have to learn, experience the same mistake to learn from somebody else's mistake. I want to learn from your mistake, or I want to capitalize on what you learned, what you did well, and do that. So if I can pass that knowledge down and hey, you don't have to go, you know, the same way that I went to get to where I'm at now, you can skip a couple of steps and get there sooner. That I mean, that that's the goal. Absolutely. I, I would say the same, same thing. Um, Jeremy, I've always said, you know, you know, I want to work and live, you know, on purpose. You know, it's a purpose why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's a purpose while I wake up every morning. And, you know, we are all blessed with 24 hours in a day. And I want to make sure I capitalize on my 24 hours and then I can start over again the next day. And, you know, I would say coming from small, humble beginnings there in Monticello, Florida, um, I would say never be afraid to fail. I mean, never be afraid to fail and, and, and kind of pick yourself up if you do fail, because it's just an opportunity to try again. And, you know, and being a, a country boy like myself, you know, I just keep chopping away, you know, keep kicking in that door um, until something just, uh, just breaks open because, you know, that old cliche, you know, success is where preparation meets opportunity, you know, for our kids of tomorrow. They just need to be ready when that opportunity presents itself. You know, you don't have time for the excuses or the shoulda, woulda, coulda. And the only way you're going to be, you know, ready is that you got to prepare yourself and you're not going to prepare yourself cramming overnight for a test. Um, this, this game of life, you got to prepare every day, every day you got to enhance that resume every day. You need to do something to make yourself a little better. So when that opportunity comes and that phone call comes or whatever, you're ready to take the bull by the horns per se and, and move forward and then put yourself in a, um, in a position where sometimes you can, you can say no when that opportunity presents itself. It's not the best opportunity for you. So you feel confident and bold in saying no, that, that's not what I want. And, and, and without having to think, oh, this is, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, this job is paying 50 or 60,000. I never had that much money in my life, so I gotta take it. No, you prepare yourself to make the decision that's what's gonna be best for you. And that's part of owning the room. That's, that's part of knowing who you are every day. And, and if you prepare like that every day, when that, you know, when that opportunity finally comes, um, you'll be successful. You'll be successful because you're the judge of your success. You know, it's, it's, it's not someone else. You're the judge in, that, in your success and how you prepare and things of that nature. So I would say never, never be um, afraid to fail and, 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 and live, live and work on purpose. 
Uh, some words. Um, thank um, you, gentlemen. Thank both of you um, for those words. Um, I guess the consensus and one thing I'll take with me is own the room. Um, I, I really like that. I really like that phrase. So that's definitely something that um, I will repeat and pass along um, just from this conversation. So um, again, thank you for your time. I know that is busy. Um, I know just during this particular period, pretty much all sports are going on. So I definitely um, appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy work week um, to sit down and have this conversation. Um, also, um, we're going to be playing this again on all of our social media platforms. So just make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ASUN Sports and also like us on Facebook. And if you have YouTube, just make sure you subscribe as well. Um, this has been another installment of our ASUN teammates. Um, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Jeremy Borland and Mr. Irvin Lewis for sitting down and talking with us, um, both from North Florida and FGCU. So it's another ASUN production. And again, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. All right, thank you. You guys have a good day. You as well. All right, take care.